Right, today we're joined by uh, our head of media call, as I like to call him, seeing as he's a uh, physio stroke program contributor, Simon Parcell. How are you, Si? Good, thank you. Uh, not enjoying the lockdown, but there you go. It's a necessary evil and, uh, and hopefully we come out of it on the right side. Definitely. And all the family well. I know you've obviously, uh, all the boys are keeping in touch and uh, taking care of the elderly and vulnerable. Yeah, it's good to see that they uh, they've not been round to do my shopping so far. They've left me uh, they they've left me and their mother to it. So uh, in some respects, it's quite nice that you uh, you haven't got people coming to visit the bank of dad or borrow something or could you just do this? Could you do that? So I don't know if I actually want the virus to end on that basis. <laughs> well, obviously you're a busy man at the minute because there's certain things happening um, as football prepares itself for a return as we've seen this week I mean before we we go into the main topic of the day which is uh, the 185 players that you've uh, worked with over your 11 years at Luton Town let's um, just briefly um, touch on the current situation I mean what, what's the what's the situation first of all with our players who were injured the likes of Brendan Galloway and Eunan O'Kane how, how, are, how are they coming along and keeping in touch with you? Yeah, no, we're making um, we're making some really um, good progress with with both of them, um, and it's been difficult. It's been challenging, I've, I've got to say. But um, with the with the help of Zoom and with the help of um, shall we say the the uh, older members of the medical team performing great de demonstration videos, um, we've managed to to get a lot of a lot of work done. And I, and I have to praise both Brendan and Union that they they have both invested in equipment at their homes and they've embraced what we've uh, tried to do with them. So we've uh, been sending out daily work programs. We've been reviewing stuff, obviously via video uh, and the such like, and they're, they're really making good progress. Um, you know, Union was a, was a project for us. Brendan obviously had his nasty injury. But um, it, it's, it's been good um, and a little bit of a, a, a tester sometimes on the psychological front because, you know, you're, you're in lockdown, you're in those four walls and you're having to do it on your own. So a little bit of cajoling along the way to try and, uh, to try and keep them focused. But, yeah, they've, they've done really, really well. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really pleased as to, to where they are. And I don't think we have really lost that much time I think um, in some respects it's been more of a one-on-one -on -one sessions than perhaps they would have got at the training ground. Yeah, I suppose it's not just physically as well but it's as you touched on it there mentally as well keeping them focused and keeping them positive isn't it because um, for those, those periods of times that they're out injured you Chris Phillips uh, Darren people like that in and around the treatment room you're like their extended family and uh, uh, and they've not got that for a few, well, they've not had that for the last two months, really, have they? No, the, the, the psychology of, uh, of the injury now is a, is a really big part. Um, it, it's getting the lads to buy into, the, you know, understanding the injury, buying into the injury, um, because when it happens, it's the end of the world. You know, um, Glenn Ray, Luke Berry, um, Cameron McGee, and all of these players, when they had those injuries, you know... They would have seen it. They would have seen it as, um, excuse me, there. Um, they would have what seen. What ringtone is that, Si? Whitney Houston. I want to dance with somebody. Want to feel the heat? Somebody. Hey, classic tunes. Classic. Um, yeah. So the psychology is 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 a big part of it, mate. In in that you, you you've got them to that that they're there. Their career is over. You know, in their mind, their career is over. Um, I'm not going to get back from this. So the psychology and then buying into it and equally with the family, you know, involving the family to, to help cajole uh, and, and producing a, a healing environment is what you've got to do. So sometimes there are ups, sometimes there's downs, sometimes you've got to look at it and say to the boys, go away. Just take three days, four days, go away, refocus and come back. You know, the body will take care of the healing but the mind is a very, very strong part of what you're dealing with and what they need to, to do. So, yeah, it, it, it really is important that you get that on board. And sometimes I have to tell them bad jokes. Um, but, you know, it just breaks that, breaks that sort of deadlock. Just sometimes? Uh, sometimes. Just a little gag here, a little gag there. You know what it's like. It's like I went to, uh, I went to uh, the Aldi's the other day. 
Yeah, I bought some. Uh, I bought some rocket. Trouble is, by the time I got home, it had gone off. <laughs> the classics. Oh, well, we've been missing them in the programmes in uh, recent weeks, definitely, mate. But I'm sure, as I was going to say, the boys they get used to your sense of humour, and uh, you know, it's a it's a laugh a minute. You're here all week, aren't you? Or you're here all lockdown in this, uh, yeah. in this case. You can have him back. So <laughs> that's Mrs. Parcel saying we can have you back. Mrs. Parcel back. Oh, you can have me back. She's fed up with the jokes by now. <laughs> She's looking forward to lockdown ending, and uh, you being back at the brace, I'm sure. But. Uh, no, just that's, that's useful insight, you know, for everybody. And, and I suppose now with with the bits that have come out this week, I know you're part of a team at the club that we're looking at the next stage now, aren't we? And, and gearing up for that return. Now we've we've had a couple of dates from the EFL. Um, so it's it, if not all systems go, it, it's sort of moving in a direction, isn't it? Yeah, it's moving in direction and we've uh, obviously have to formulate plans to make sure that we are bringing players back into a safe environment. I mean, that is the, 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 big, the big thing here. You know, we have to be safe. We, we cannot underestimate that we are still in, in kind of troubled times. You know, everyone still needs, as, as we're told, to be alert. We still need to do all the things that we should be doing to, to, to stay safe. So... Yeah, we've had to um, look at the training ground. We've had to devise a facility. We've had to uh, there that, um, you know, allows us to bring them in, allows them to access the training field and get out without socially um, compromising themselves. And also looking at, you know, testing protocols that might be needed. So it, that this, um, yes, there's a plan in, in, in place, but there's still, I feel, a little way to go um, until we see some see some football and we must you know we must make sure it's safe and as somebody who's obviously worked in the nhs before you you moved into football first time i mean um full time should i say you you you'd have seen you you know what people are going through in the nhs and that's the main thing uh, really that we we're, we're not taking anything away from testing or anything that the nhs need I mean, they've been brilliant, haven't they? Your some of your former colleagues, or all of your former colleagues. Yeah, I mean, let, let's. You could never. No one could have ever have um, envisaged this and what it would bring, and 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 how it would disrupt everything. And those frontline workers, uh, you know, the the doctors, nurses, and everything. I mean, that they've been outstanding. That we tend to forget that we have a fantastic system with the NHS worldwide. Yeah, if you go abroad, you know yourself, something happens abroad, yeah, you don't trust that as much as you trust your own NHS, you know, and we're very quick to criticise because we might have to wait a couple of weeks longer than usual. But it's a system that's, you know, that was, that's overrun. It, it provides wonderful care. You know, I, I can only speak personally uh, in terms of my son had a, a, a kidney transplant and you, you couldn't have had better care. Um, so that they're, they're fantastic in what they do and how they've responded to this is nothing short of uh, of a miracle, really. Uh, and talking in terms of the testing, the testing is not in any way, shape or form affecting anything that would happen in the NHS. It's, uh, it, it, it would be uh, very remiss of us to think that we would be above and beyond any of that. Yeah, and that's the key message that, you know, I think from every football club and every organization within the game that that's been the key message coming through the last few weeks isn't it that nothing will take away from uh, what's going on on a wider scale across the country so it's um you know it's key to get that across absolutely and in relation to any kind of ppe that that you know um, we are we are in a, a pecking order and the and the nhs carers those type of people um will will certainly be in front of us to get that equipment well, we've touched on a couple of the players who you've been treating recently, virtually, remotely, however we want to, uh, to, to describe it with your healing hands. Um, 180, I mean, you've clearly been bored. We've just heard that, from, you know, Mrs. Parcells getting fed up with you, but you, you spent some time. There's me bits of paper. I sat there, I just sat there. And uh, I thought one day um, I pass a bit of time, so I started. Um, I started scribbling down uh, how many players I uh, had seen, because the one the one thing about this um, kind of situation 
is is the social media and you know how you've kind of um don't know if it's happened to you but how suddenly out of the blue you've perhaps speak, spoken to people that you haven't spoken to in a long time and you know going back in my football career all of a sudden out of the blue tark and mustafa uh, fullback at russian and diamonds gets in touch and he you know he wants to talk about some of the old days simply because a picture had appeared on on um facebook and so I sat there thinking to myself, how many? And then Janos Kovacs came up on uh, Facebook. How are you doing, Fizz? You know, he's in uh, Budapest and he's, he's, he's doing stuff. And I'm thinking to myself, blimey, how many have I seen come and go? Um, so the list started and then I kept going a bit more and going a bit more. And I kind of just kept it down to those that had played in the first team. Otherwise, I could have kept going with... Um, with ones that had um, sort of like youth players that had, had come through and been given pro contracts but never actually played. So I limited myself to, a, to a 185 and as you, go, as you go through it, there's some, some fine names there and also uh, one or two giggles. So let's get, just go back to the start. I mean, you, not the start of this process of you coming up with all the names, but you joined Luton in 2010 when you left Rushton. Obviously, yeah. with all their problems. Who was uh, manager at the time? Was it Richard Money? Yeah, Richard. Richard Money um, was the uh, was the manager. Uh, I met him and uh, and Gary in the uh, I think it's the Icon Hotel next to um, the police station in Luton. Um, and the one that's got the uh, Trotters Independent Traders. Uh, yeah. We like Robin outside now. And that's it. So, yeah, I met there, came across um, uh, and had an interview and, and, uh, and went away from, uh, from the interview because it was, it was funny in the first place because um, I only saw the job advertised um, and it was like 24 hours to, to closing. So I emailed the club and, uh, and said I'd got an interest and um, Andy Burgess at the time um said to uh, was talking to me um and he, he obviously was in touch with gary and um so I, I just sent an email saying i'll cv to follow and we'll see what happens um and i was uh, i was stood in the uh, in my local hostillery uh, enjoying ale um and the uh, the uh, you know i hadn't heard anything and the phone went so it's a strange number on my phone. So I, I, I'm listening uh, and it's, uh, it was a lady, Alison, who I didn't really know at that time. And she was the secretary in the, in the academy, I think, or something like that. Anyway, she's saying it's, uh, it's Alison here from, uh, from Luton Town. Uh, we'd like you to come for an interview. And being a suspicious kind of bloke, bear in mind I'm in the pub with my mates, I'm now looking around the pub because they know uh, that I've, uh, that I've uh, applied. So I'm looking around to see who's on the pub phone, who's on their mobiles. And I'm just about in the process of saying, oh, come on, it's a good gag, this one. But, you know, you're not getting me. I'm not having it. And then put the phone down. Um, but I just suddenly thought, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, so that, that's how I landed up getting the interview. It could have been quite easy. I could have cut her off midstream and uh, never got there. Well, thankfully, you did get here. And uh, where, where, where were we at the time, training ground-wise? Or was it at the stadium? Yeah, to... way. Way was, uh, was way. a training ground. Yeah, um, so uh, that was a that was a culture shock. And who uh, was the first, who was the first player that walked in? It's obviously Porter Cab. We, we've seen Ely Way recently, obviously with the fire that devastated it. Those Porter cabins. But that who was the first player that walked in your uh, your little treatment room in those Porter cabins? Can you remember? Uh, the first player I met because he was always the uh, earliest player was Mark Tyler. Um, and so he was, he was the first guy that I bumped into, um, that, that presumably, some, presumably somebody you knew from your Peterborough connections. Yeah, definitely. So it was, it was quite nice that, um, you know, you knew, you knew someone and you, and you first bumped, uh, you first bumped into them. And then it was just after that, uh, they were appearing from all corners, Keith Keane, Freddie, Freddie Murray, um, they, they were coming at you from, uh, from all angles. And, um, it was um, it was kind of a little bit of a, um, a strange one in that you, you were a little bit, if you like, starstruck with some of them, 
because they they'd been in the you know they'd been in the football league and you'd seen them on the uh, you'd seen them on the television and they'd been the Johnson's Paint Cup fight. It, it, there was there was that little bit about some of them that had been around Keith Keane and the and the such like. Um, whereas you know sort of at Rushton it was more of a little family club and um, you didn't have superstars. Yeah, you, I mean as, as you say at that time in the conference, Luton were the biggest club. You know, I know from my job, obviously, at the non-league paper, where I spoke to you many times at, at, when you were at Rushton and enjoyed going to, to Nem Park and the setup that was there. But Luton coming into the conference um, was on a different scale, wasn't it? This is a club that had won the Littlewoods Cup. And the, as you say, the JPT and, and we'd seen at Wembley in front of 40 odd thousand people and suddenly they're in the conference and you're there now joining that club. Yeah, it was it, it was it was kind of similar in the way that at, at Rushton, Rushton was the the big fish in the conference because of the financial backing that it that it had. So there were similarities, but you suddenly, because of the the overwhelming support and the fans that you you know you were going to these grounds, and Luton fans were turning up, you know, not in tens, not in twenties, they were turning up in hundreds and thousands. Um, and you suddenly thought to yourself, God, go, hang on a minute. This is this is this is a place that's waiting to erupt. It's waiting to to come back. It, it's, it is that typical sleeping giant, really, really waiting to come. And and you and you couldn't help but then get kind of involved in that fever um, of of expectation and and really wanting to to do it. And but everywhere you went, it was everyone's cup final. Everyone, you know, was was trying that bit more, and um, you know, you'd get your comments of, "Oh, it won't be water in your bucket; it'll be uh, it'll be Evian, won't it?" And um, it, it, you'd get those kind of comments from uh, from people. So it was um, it was a. Uh, uh, um, uh, I'm not being disrespectful to uh, to to Rushton because they're a fantastic club and what they achieved and the, and the 13, 14 years I had there, but this was a big club. Definitely. Yeah, I, I remember going at the time. I think it was before you joined Luton, but I remember going, you mentioned Birds there, but going to a game at Kettering. I think it was probably two, Mick was still in charge. Uh, so it's probably four or five weeks into the season. And, you know, seeing the, the Luton fans just take over Rockingham Road as it was then. Um, and I, you know, I remember tam, trips to Tamworth and places yeah. like that. And you just, as you say, those conference clubs just giving their home ends over to Luton because the fans were going to fill them and it was their payday, their cup final, wasn't it? And what, what was the, uh, you mentioned some of the comments there you get. We, we know places like Barrow are quite hostile and what's the most hostile place you've been to is, is physio at Luton? Blimey, that's a good. Um, that's a that's a good a good question. Um, I think maybe, hostile, is, maybe hostile is not the right word, but you know you can hear the you can hear the banter, can't you? you and you get those comments like you just uh, said uh, in your bucket. Yeah, it's 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 amazing um, that you you go to these places and um, you, you you're at the dugout and behind you you can hear all kinds of expletives and in your your it's constant you know and it's it's kind of like that tribal thing is that if, oh, if we can hurt them a bit if we can hurt them a bit if we can distract them if we can just do this we can do that and um, and then suddenly you turn round and all that abuse is coming from a 56 year old woman <laughs> and you're thinking to yourself wowza what happened there you know um but it doesn't compare to sort of um walking past the crowd at Millwall and and someone sort of singing at you sort of sex pest sex pest hang him hang him hang him or you feel as if you're getting like sucked into the crowd um uh, with with sort of the the participation so hostility hostility yes um and uh, kind of some grounds are more intense than 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 others um, but it's it, it, it it's the those fans doing the what they think is the best for their club, you know, to try and win a game of football. It's that tribal experience, you know, um, with stuff. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it's um, I always remember in the I'm just trying to think of the place now in the um, in the FA um, the FA Cup we went with Luton and the dressing room was about six foot square, 
and uh, and at the time uh, we were trying to do ice baths and things like that after games so we took one of the wheelie bins uh, with us and we thought I'd be all right so we managed to get the uh, we managed to get the wheelie bin um, in the dressing room filled it with cold water uh, Alex Lawless said um, that he wanted to go in so it, we got it in a little uh, corner so Alex Lawless went in uh, of course we're clearing the dressing room we're, we're, uh, we're trying to get out and then there's a little voice that comes from the corner please please so uh, yeah well, 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 Alex he went I'm stuck I can't get out the wheelie bin and so there's two of us, it's me and Daz trying to get him out the wheelie bin. We, we sort of hadn't got a step inside to make it. So we've had to lower the wheelie bin with him in it and let the water come out and then recover the body. Geisley, that was it, Geisley. So, uh, yeah, there's been some interesting uh, dressing rooms, but we've always insisted uh, since, since I've been here um, and it was installed kind of into me, is wherever you go, you're respectful of what is there and you always leave the dressing room in immaculate condition you tidy up you you leave it as you as you um you know as you find it um and that was always installed into me and i think because we did that we we got a lot of respect and it was amazing then that clubs would come to kenilworth road and they would leave the dressing room in a similar kind of condition so it was um you know you always be Yes, we were a big club. Yes, we could, we you know we had ambitions, but you know always be respectful. Yeah, definitely. Um, on to players then. Um, Tiles was the first one that came in. Well, you, I know you you've picked a few out. We we were going through some yesterday, but um, probably one of the early ones. You, you mentioned Ronnie Henry to me, and uh, Ronnie Ronnie was was he googling every everything he could have uh, before he came to you and. Ron's my favourite. I've got to be honest. If, if, you know when you, you look at players, and uh, and, I, and uh, I loved Ron, and um, he he was a fantastic captain, uh, a real leader, a real leader. You know, he he in the dressing room uh, and stuff. He, he was a real leader, Ronnie. But he also was, um, I think, uh, kind of paranoid about stuff and. Um, he, uh, he would come in and he would turn around and say, oh, you know, I've got this pain in my leg or whatever. And you turn around and you start to talk to him and he'd go, oh, yeah, well, what I did was I just had a little look on the NHS website and um, it's suggesting that it could be, uh, it could be like um, uh, varicose veins. No, 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 no. I can assure you, you've not got varicose veins. Oh, right, 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 right. Uh, well, it, it, it said that I could land up paralyzed. No, 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 no. You're all right, Ronnie. You're not going to land up paralysed with what you with what you've got. And and Ron would read these NHS ones, and probably his uh, his most famous ones was uh, he approached the doc and said to the doc, um, "I think I need to have my prostrate inspected." So the doc said to him, "You do know what that means and what I've got to do, Ronnie, don't you?" And when the doc explained it to him, he went, "I think I'm feeling a bit better now." <laughs> <laughs> but he was he was uh, great, Ron. He, he was. Um, yeah, he, he was always um, on that NHS website. I, I think I've got this. Or if it's a cold, it wouldn't be, you know, it wouldn't be a cold, it'd be pneumonia. Um, but missed very few games, always available. Um, but a, a, real, a real good lad. And I, I suppose a little bit earlier than that, there was um, a young lad who was signed from St Albans. And I still see his name cropping up now when I read the non-league paper. I think, I think he's at Woking now, but... Uh, God, Godfrey Pocky was uh, was a oh, favourite, God. wasn't he? Godfrey were, used to brighten my day up. Unbelievable, uh, Godfrey um, used to love chicken. Oh, he was mad for chicken, that boy. And I think it was a, it might have been a shop in Luton, Chicken George or something like that. that but still, he just, go, still going strong. Uh, he 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 loved it, and he was such a bubbly, bright respectful well-mannered um lad you know um into his into his music and what have you but godfrey was exceptionally ticklish um so if you treated godfrey and and you you touched him all of a sudden he'd be like a curled up ball on the bed and he he wouldn't be able to stop laughing and he'd be like he just uh oh, fizz 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 don't 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 i'm ticklish i'm ticklish i'm ticklish and he was just so uh, so sensitive um, and you can imagine then trying to put ice on Godfrey. 
oh, it used to be, you know, you've got to ice it, Godfrey. No, 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 I can't do that. I'm too cold, too cold. It's the only guy I know that would ice an ankle or a knee either through three pairs of socks or tracksuit bottoms on um, to do it. But what a, what, a, what a lad, what a character. It used to just brighten your day up. So bubbly, so bright. Are there any others from that kind of era before we move on to more, more recent players? Yeah. That, um, you know, who's, who's the best... Who's the best sort of patient? I don't want to call them patients because, uh, you know, there's, there's much more serious things going on at the minute where, you know, people are patients. But who's the best um, person to come into your, your treatment room and, you know, really commit to it from minute one? I've, I've, got, to be, I've got to be honest with you, uh, Stu, is, is that all the lads... All the lads that we've had have always um, done their best and bought into it. I, I can honestly say, you know, Claude Napka used to like a, a, a rub and a, and a, and a social. Um, a, a Tino would, uh, he'd have to have a full body, you know. Um, a Wusu was uh, a man that would want a, a massage, but it had to, it had to hurt him. You know, it had to be that deep. You know, if the thumb was almost going through him and onto the bed, you know, it, it, unless there was pain, it wasn't good. Um, but all of them would buy into, you know, Keith Keane was, uh, Keith Keane was 26 going on 42 with his body. Um, but all of the lads, when they were, they were injured, I have to say they all wanted to get back into the, the, the fight. I, I'd, never, I'd never come across a lad that, you know, that didn't really want to, want to do it and, and want to get then you know they, they all like to be led and they all like to have routine and and stuff but I can honestly say that they 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 were really a good over the years they've been a real good bunch of, uh, of boys to work with now uh you, you'll have seen a name pop up on the screen here because uh i have asked a couple of the more recent patients to uh to come and join us and uh, yeah Let's see if we can uh, get this one. He spent most of the past two years with me. Go on. Are you there, Dan? Yeah, can you see me? No. No, it's not. No, the yeah. picture I've seen of you for a bit. Okay, here we go. Here he is. There Hello. he is. There's my boy. How are we all? Uh -oh. How are you, Dan? I don't, know, I don't know if I should feel honoured or um, insulted, to be on this call, actually, because I said to Stu, I'm not... We're talking, we're talking to the club physio and you're inviting me onto the flipping call. I'm not, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Well, I've, hey. been, ask, I've been asking him about, you know, the, the, the mentality in the treatment room and the little family that develops. And you've been his son for the past two years in there, mate. So uh, we just thought you'd... It, we've actually not got on to the point. Two years, not two years. I'll give you... It's got to be. It's got to be. I've, I've seen you months. go through Hellos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. Fucking. Hey, shocking. we've had to talk. We've talked more about hair transplants than we have a uh, than we have knee transplants. Knee transplants. I know. Yeah. You know, I've got your medical records on on this little this little thing here. It's restricted to, to about one terabyte. You need to lose it. You need to get rid of that. <laughs> you joke well, about hair. You joke about hair. Say again. I so say you joke about hair transplants there, uh, Dan, but the, this was going to be the one big operation for you this summer, wasn't it? You, you were planning turkey and all sorts. But... I know, it's killed me. It's killed me, isn't it? I'm going to have to wait till 2021 now, aren't I? Oh, mate, so I was so, look, so looking forward to you coming back with a fringe. They might, they might be able to do me a two-for-one knee and hair transplant at the same time, what do you reckon? Oh, hey, and a few other bits. <laughs> Danny, Bright Danny brightens my day up when he uh, when he comes he, he, he very rarely is um down um and and he brightens your day up when he comes in so i probably am facing in in one direction i get a slap on the back of the head or i'll get a nudge or something he very rarely down um and he he brightens he brightens you up that's for sure contagious contagious eh yeah that's uh, that's a worry yeah in fact really? I've, had, I've had withdrawal symptoms yeah i bet you i bet you've enjoyed the time away to be fair not at all give your hands a rest give your hands a rest it is 
I'm still I'm still looking at that receipt from when you nearly bought me coffee. The time <laughs> I did. But the reason the I bought I I free coffee because she thought I was taking my granddad out for a day out in London. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and this is this is and this boy is is that you take him to see a consultant, right? And he has the tightest pair of jeans on that you have ever noticed. And it takes us longer to get him out of the jeans than it does to get the injection done in his knee. He's still trying to be, he's still trying to live and he's trying to, some people reckon they could have been the wife's jeans. Yeah, you got, it's the, it's the fashion though, isn't it? You've got to be down with the kids. Everyone's wearing the, the tight jeans. It, yeah, mate, you're the only one that, the only one that worries about what pants he's wearing. Very well. This is why I invited Danny on, Si, to actually defend himself, because I, I expected there to be a couple of stories about, uh, about him. And uh, I know there's one you shared in the programme a, a few months ago. What was the way he ended up at the wrong hospital? We, I mean, we all know where Lister Hospital is, don't we? Oh. <laughs> Do you know what? The biggest, the biggest worry for me was, uh, at the time, I, I'm talking to him on the phone and I'm going... Um, where are you? And he's going, yeah, yeah, I'm close, I'm close, I'm nearly there, I'm nearly there. And I'm going, yeah, but you, 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 you've got to be careful here because Chelsea Flower Show's on and the parking around it, the parking around it is horrible. And, and he led me to, he almost led me to believe that he was near the flower show. He was going, yeah, yeah, it's all right. I was putting it in my Tom Tom and I was like, right, I, I, I thought I was going to be late because I'd left it and I got the time wrong or something. And then I remember being on the phone to you said, traffic's a nightmare. And I remember being about, I don't know, six minutes away on like an A road or something, just clear as the day, no one around me. And you're saying there's loads of traffic, there's Chelsea Slough show, you won't be able to get in here, there or anywhere. And then it started, I started panicking for, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to the wrong place here, 100%. And then it was the wrong place, wasn't it? We had to reschedule in the end. But. It's, when you, it's when you said to me, when I said to him, I rang him again, so I'm still ringing, and Danny went, I'm here, I'm here. And I'm standing there thinking, I'm stood out the front, I can't see anything. So I went into the reception and I said to the lady in reception, is there a car park that any players can get into? And she went, well, not unless he's been a bit clever and got through the barrier. So I've now gone around to look through the barrier. And I'm thinking, I can't see him anywhere. <laughs> and then, then he's come back and goes, I'm at the Lister, but it's in Stevenage. <laughs> yeah, that's where I was, weren't I? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was... Um... Listen, I know now, anyway, I'm a pro now. There's not many... There's not many I don't know how to get to now. Off hey, my mate, heart, I don't have Tom anymore. You must be very busy at Christmas with the amount of invites you get to hospital functions. Oh, uh, no, no. To be fair, they are the ladies at the, um, the one-stop are getting a bit... They get a little bit leery now, don't they? But they oh, well, they withdraw we'll, from you. And we'll, we'll, no doubt we'll see you soon. <laughs> yeah. no Is it you, again? you again? Yeah. I know. And then, and then of course... He worried me because when, uh, when his knee uh, flared up, we had to fly him back from uh, Slovenia to get some stuff done. And of course, what happens with Dan is we're, we're trying to fly him back and he's got to go via Germany or somewhere like that. And then his and phone, phone the day before. Oh, then his phone's gone. And then so we can't keep in touch with him. So I'm having to, I'm having to sort of go through all kinds of um, protocols to try and find out where he is and if he's arrived. Thank goodness for your good lady, Dan. I don't know how I managed. To be honest, I was panicking the whole way. I've only ever flown on an airplane once by myself. So to get, I had to what change in Germany, wait in Germany airport, at Munich. Then I, oh. yeah, I was panicking. To be fair, but I made it back. Then I? I made it back. Uh, that, was, that was amazing. That was amazing that you did that. I, I was so I, I was convinced. I was going to get a phone call and you'd gone on to, uh, you were in Dubai or somewhere. You got on the wrong plane. Oh, yeah. Well, that would have been lucky. Oh, lucky. Save me <laughs> sitting in your room for a week in, in wherever we were, Portugal or Slovenia, on the oh, game mate. ready. But more importantly, because, of course, obviously you're fit, you're healthy, you're raring to go and you've been available now for a little while. So the most important thing is, how are you surviving without Beza? Um, to be fair, we got a little uh, thing. Me, Beza, there's a few of us. Me, Beza, Jonesy, we, uh, we, we Zoom call regularly. We make sure we have at least a Zoom call every couple of days just to keep 
keep up to date with everything. Um, we're always we're always on the WhatsApp and stuff like that. But do you two, do nice you, still, do you two still fall out on the on the WhatsApp? You know, because how you two will fall out over uh, whether it was uh, a legal shot on the pool table, whether it wasn't a legal shot, whether you're cheating and moving oh, the ball around, um, all that. This is over over Zoom. This is gonna sound pathetic to be fair, three grown men doing this, but we've had like a we've had like a press up competition where you have to get in there and get into position, you just do your press ups and or or a plank. You just have to hold the plank for as long as you can and we're on we're on Zoom holding the plank. Um there was only one winner of course in all of them. I guess you oh, can imagine course. who that was. Of course. Um yeah, we won't go into that. We won't go into it. Hey, this is what it's this is what it's like, Stu, with these two on a daily on a daily basis. From the moment they come in to the moment they go, there there is a competitive edge, and then you'll get the uh, the comments of um, Hilt to Bears about his ankle. Uh, ever since you got it round the right way, or something like that, and then they'll be they'll be he'll be going on about his uh, his knee and. That's how they survive. And then you can walk in the gym and suddenly you'll have to duck because there'll be a ball flying down the gym where someone's got frustrated. Well, this is the thing that I was uh, touching on earlier. When you're in that treatment room together, you, you do have the banter flying and you, know, you, you, you become like one big family arguing amongst yourselves. And we all know what Hilts and Bez are like when they, they come to argue. But Dan, from a player's point of view, how important is Simon? Because he's... Uh, you know, he likes a joke, as we've just been talking about. And yeah. when, when you're injured, yeah. that's important, um, isn't it? Yeah, yeah of course. Uh, it's, it's important you've got that. The side's got serious side, of course. He's very good at what he does and experience of what he does. So you can always... Um, it's, I'm probably worse. I'm firing questions at Sai all the time. He explains it, and then five minutes later, I'm just firing questions. He always answers them and gives you the assurance, and he, he tells you honestly as well. He doesn't sugarcoat things. Well, he goes about things the right way, but he'll tell you, honestly, you need to do this. And if you don't do this, then this is what will happen. So, you know, but he's also got a fun side to, that I think is equally as important because if you go through a, a, a long-term injury, which I had been just recently or someone like Bez or, I don't know, Brendan, who's going through, you, you normally get one or two a season. I think that fun side is just as important to keep you going because you know being injured is lonely and all the rest of the lads go out so if you've got that banter or I'm going to say this word I'm not really sure what it means camaraderie well, <laughs> that, it, it to, then, uh, to play for Everton he was right, was right back uh, at Everton <laughs> <laughs> no he's, so it keeps you going doesn't it if you, it's, if you keep having to go into the same room and you're stuck indoors for 11 months then you know, to have a little laugh and a joke about the injury and about everything else and just having a bit of fun day to day, it keeps you going and gets you through it, doesn't it? And are you missing him? You know, we're lucky. Say again? Are you missing him? Of course he is. No, not missing <laughs> him. Nice to get a break. Like you said, I've been stuck in his room for ages. It's nice to get a break. I'm sure I'll be back in there soon. Anyway, don't worry. Hey, I've saved about five grand in tape. <laughs> who who else is um who else is due to join us here? There's got to be there's got to be one or two of it. Surely it's not just oh, it's not just rope. This. No, you know that I've invited Bez, but he's not. He's he, you know what he's like. He he's not going to show off, is he? I've just messaged him to say are you coming into this chat or what. But I I thought you'd have got on to the. You know, really digging them out side by now, but we've been talking about some of the older non-league players, which obviously was one of the reasons why we've got Danny. But uh, is um, older hut? He plays older hut. Won it with record points. It says it says Andrew Shinny says to him. Shin's always uh, Shin's always popped into him. Older hut. Who are older hut? <laughs> Shin's can't say anything. He played in the in the Scottish Division 1. Like, what is the Scottish Division 1? Like, honestly, <laughs> seriously. Sorry, Sunday, football. Sunday football. Huh? Exactly, that's what I mean. I'd rather play for all uh, To be fair, I played against Shins when he was at, I think it was Inverness or wherever he was at. 
can't remember who he was playing for, and I was all shot. And um, they were on a tour of pre-season or something. We played them. I think we drew one or nil nil. I remember Shin's playing up, and he remembers it because I almost I didn't. I was only a young but I almost scored an unbelievable goal in the game. Like I uh, tried to chip the keeper from far out. It would have been unbelievable. Man, Shin still remembered it. To be fair, but yeah, I'd uh, I play. Yeah, uh, I'd rather have played for all the shot than there. That's hundred percent. The good, the, the good news is, is that the FA though, uh, Hilts, they um, they were already um, furloughing play, uh, staff because obviously your bookings weren't coming through. <laughs> yeah. It's the only fellow I know. It's the only I know that got that got sent off for having a litter picker on the pitch. Crazy. So oh. I've got a day on Instagram. I got a message the other day on Instagram from uh, some EFL page or something. And uh, and it was a video of me, and it was like all silly stuff that I'd done, and it was like do pull up on the crossbar, throwing the little picker, celebrating in front of the goalie, uh, pushing that lad into the over the over the barrier at Luton. Do you remember whatever his name? The lad who used to play for Luton. Yeah, Lacey. And I was like, oh, it's pathetic, isn't it? What? <laughs> yeah, that's what you was expect a nine-year-old's video to look like, not a flipping. Hey, we, we, had, we had to use the we had to use the defib a couple of times on Nathan because he was going epileptic and you were uh, when you were doing it and uh, that's all they kept getting in my ear was Danny, no, Danny, no, Danny. At least the, day Notts, the day at Notts County. I mean, there's <laughs> only one man that can go and get sent off in a, a game where both sides are celebrating and uh, it's nil nil, massive promotion party. <clears throat> I didn't mean to, obviously, I literally, I swear to you, I just jumped to try and head this ball right. But I, I ended up going, but it was one of my like regrets that, like getting sent off that day, because it was such a good day, such celebrations. I remember not really being allowed back out onto the pitch after, but not wanting to because I was in a mood. <clears throat> but it ruined, <clears throat> it didn't ruin that day for me, but <clears throat> it was, I wish I, I wish I didn't get sent off that day because it, it was potentially a really good day, but. It was just a crap end, really. But yeah, that's one of the one of the few that I actually regret. Quite enjoyed a few others, to be fair. But um, I mean, we, no, we got him on here to talk about injuries, side, but it probably is better to talk about suspensions, Dan. It, well, what the the lit, going back to the litter picking one. I mean, that was just bizarre. But it was just there, wasn't it? And all you did was threw, did he say you threw it at the linesman? But you just threw it in the corner, didn't you? Because you slid on it. Yeah, I remember, you know, when the, I remember the defender shielding the ball out, and it's one of the most frustrating things in it when you try and get around the defender and you can't get around him. And the ball went so, we both shoved each other, fell on the floor. And I thought it was a foul because I was saying he's obstructing me. He wasn't even trying to play the ball kind of thing, but you never get him. I remember just falling onto a, a litter picker. I, don't, I mean, I, I, I don't know who's left it there, but it was there. And I just, yeah, frustration picked up. And I didn't chuck it at him. I just threw it down the side. But, the, you know, linesmen, they're a special breeds, aren't they? And he thought that it was aimed at him. It wasn't. Yeah, and off you go. Down the tunnel I went. Here he is, look. Here he is. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> What's happened? Who's been doing your hair? Oh, it's a shocker, um, isn't it? That's an absolute <laughs> shocker. Shock, look at it. Look at that, mate. <laughs> wow. Okay. Hold his up. How do I make wait? Well, let me just talk this out. All right. Doesn't he look like that fella off of Jimmy's farm? He does. No, they make a uh, Tiger King. <laughs> Brad, hey, Pitt. Brad Pitt. The best one for me. <laughs> Armpit. Best one for me, Hilts, and it still sticks with me, was Forest Green away and the goalie in the, uh, in the pink kit. And your uh, your Twitter afterwards. Oh, it went off, didn't it? It went yeah. off. Got good few. Uh, good few. Uh, good few. I think comment? it went up a few hundred after that. Huh? What was the comment? It was something like Santa doesn't always wear red, does he? Sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> something like that, because it was like Christmas in a week's time or something, wasn't it? But yeah, yeah. And you were going off. You were going off on the Christmas do that night, weren't you? You you were going to uh, was it Dublin or Cardiff? And, uh, uh, it did go Dublin. down. 
it did go down a tree. But uh, yeah, yeah, Bez, we, we've not. What's he's eating his lunch? He's <laughs> <laughs> always eating the boil, he's always eating. Got a bit of soup. What's going on? He's normally eating and I'm paying the bill. Oh. Well, this, this is yeah. what I wanted to uh, get him on for, Si, because you, you guys, well, you tell the story about when you used to go on your trips into London with him for his scans and uh, early morning breakfasts. Mate, he used to pick the most expensive places to go for breakfast, and I'm sat down there. And when I look across, he's having salmon. He's having all of the uh, all of the high end breakfast. Mate, he, it, he ripped my debit card apart. And absolutely ripped my debit card, or he disappeared. He disappeared to the toilet. Definitely. That was Chris. Hey, never know Chris anything like it. Young oh, man from Cambridge. What do you know about yeah. salmon? Buy your breakfast, sir. You saved his career, man. Ah, oh, hey, amazing, amazing. It was. He didn't get me a free coffee like you did at the uh, railway station at King's Cross. Yeah, more than one free coffee, sir. I tell you that. Hey. Yeah, Man, I used to bring coffee. him to train him. He used to bring a coffee in every day for you lot. Yeah. Dear, dear yeah, from, not from flipping Starbucks, no chance. You're the tightest man alive. Made it in the cafeteria, cafeteria <laughs> bit, but he used to yeah, bring it in. Kept bringing in the same Starbucks cup every day, but filling it up in the canteen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that wouldn't surprise me. So, Bez, I asked Hilts. How important is Simon when you could, all we can see is his ear? Are you are you actually eating yourself or feeding the baby? No, I'm eating some. What are you talking to me? Come on, <laughs> eating the baby. What? Uh, how important is Simon in in keeping that spirit in the treatment room? And you know, you've spent a lot of time with him over not the last year because you've been fit then, but uh, a couple of years ago. This is fit. Don't think he's not in that physio room every day still. Yeah, I've he's seen it with the ice. I don't oh, go in the physio sorry. room. It's a bad place. He's not got the nickname Ice Man for no reason. He's got bags of ice all over his body every day. Don't, just because he's his name's on the team sheet, he's still in it. He's a regular. I, I had to buy a new ice machine for you two. Exactly. Didn't he break the ice machines as well? The game readies. Mate. He's got half of my equipment in that shed at the bottom of his garden. He does as well. He does. He knows it as well. <laughs> he's got the best home gym in the world and he's got paid for one bit of equipment. <laughs> <laughs> Just need that old G now. Been trying to work that in my car. <laughs> Got to work out I can get in the boot. Yeah. <laughs> it's my bits. And he does his kit man for that. He's good for morale. He he keeps us going when times are tough. And um yeah, he's always good. He's always good for a joke. Crap joke, but a joke. Whoa, whoa. quality. <laughs> so what what was it like? Obviously when, when Bez uh did his ankle at Colchester and he was still living at home with his mum then and uh stepdad, what was it like when you first went round to that house in Bassingbourne? Well, I didn't realise that I had to wait at the gates for obviously this fella to come down and open the gates up to let me uh, to let me in. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it was a, it was an interesting experience. I've never quite seen so much in one room. In that there was a <laughs> there was a set of weights behind the door. Um, there was uh, there was obviously his Cambridge United. Uh, FA Trophy uh, winning shirt and medal on display because that's burnt now. That's burnt. That's, that's obviously <laughs> very important. But the one thing that struck me is when I finally got a cup of tea uh, there. One thing that struck me was the blue tack on the television. That was the one thing, and we were watching the Commonwealth Games, uh, and we were sat there watching some of the Commonwealth Games. And I kept thinking to myself, why have you got a bit of blue tack on the TV screen? And why did you have a bit of blue tack on the TV screen, Bez? I, I can't even. I can't even begin to think what this is going to be. To be honest, I call of duty. Know. So you don't need to aim. The what? Call of duty. So you don't need to aim. So you have blue tack on the screen to tell you where to shoot. Yeah. So what? Any time one of the eight go in on into that blue tack, bang! Just press the button. It's you brown bread. Yeah, well, it's, it's easier, isn't it? 
that's uh, just <laughs> yeah, just little margins, little margins. That's the difference. Yeah, yeah. both been struggling. dying and surviving. So now yeah, you're in the real, yeah. now you're in the real world and you're a dad and you've yeah. got your own ass. Are you still doing that kind of thing, best? Well, I, do, I play Call of Duty, but not with blue tackle. No. I get told he was playing Call of Duty with, with Louis the other week. Yeah, Louis I was. I was playing with Louis. Fortnite. <laughs> Louis, he was begging me to play because Louis's not allowed to play Call of Duty. But I thought I'll get on it. I'll try and get on it and play with Bez and Jonesy and some of the other lads. And it's the hardest game in the world, right? And I'll never play it again. You wait ages to get loaded up, and then I die in about five seconds, right? And then you just spend the rest of the time having to watch Bez and Jonesy. But Louis, Louis's good at the game, so he played. And I just let I just walked away from the PlayStation left Louis playing with Bez and they were playing and they were going around. I could hear him talking on the headset from downstairs. Um So like for people that for people that watch this here, so obviously Louis is your is he ten now? Nine or ten? Ten year old son. Yeah, he's nine, but uh the game does say eighteen, but <laughs> 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 it was only it was only three it was only for half an hour or so. He's playing it under adult supervision. Well, Bez's supervision anyway. Yeah. No, it was si, good. Sorry, si, a little question for you it's when like he's uh, been playing it for years. Been playing it hey? A little question for you, Sai, about these two. Um one of the highlights, when when they've been through their rehab with you and, and you know, gone through a lot over a big period of time. I think one of, the, one of the highlights of last season was when Bez came on in injury time against... He's got that old Tash back look. <laughs> well, I, I, got, I went out a bit then. My connection went. Come back in. The, um, when he came back on against... Was it Fleetwood or Burton you came on in the, and you got a brilliant reception from the fans? And then Hilts uh, this season against Sheffield Wednesday um, came on and the, boy, the fans are singing their names as, as they come on. What does that mean to you as a physio when you've seen them go through what they've been through and you've worked so hard to get them back on the pitch and they get that reception? I think uh, it, there's, there's a... Uh, I mean, when he went on against West Brom and then nearly gave away a penalty and got outpaced... So rapidly. glad you meant that because I was so, so about to... Yeah, that was, that was a bit of a worry. I thought to myself, maybe I've shortchanged everybody here having looked at, <laughs> having looked at. Um But no, it's... It, 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 it's the culmination of, of everything, yeah, and it's brilliant when you when you you know whether that's Bears, Hilt, Glen Ray, when they go back on that pitch, you you've got a nervousness, you've got a real nervousness about things, and you hope it goes well. But it's a fantastic feeling. It's an absolute fantastic feeling that that they're fit, they're healthy, and they're back doing what they what they want to do. And that and that's the bit that sometimes people forget. You know, they're, they're missing. For that period of time, what they want to do, and that, and that's play football. All they want to do is play football. So it's nervousness, but it's a real gives you a real buzz to see them uh, to see them, you know, do it and and go through those things, scoring a goal afterwards, and um, it, it it's a real sort of a little emotional roller coaster, really, because um, as I say, you're nervous, but at the same time, you're really really uh, happy for them. And in those two cases, it was a real pleasure because I wasn't going to see him again. Well, <laughs> we've not seen Bez. You did see Bez again fairly quickly. But, uh, it's, uh, how, have you, how have you been keeping on top of them, keeping fit at the minute? And, and you two, are you fit? With one of these. Oh, Tip top, mate. One of these. Look. This has been there with the old rerun with the old Kaiser. Is that just for just for show, Dan? That's no, to be that. fair, it's, it's it's unbelievable. To be fair, uh, it saves going out and running every day because you don't you don't need to do that. To be fair, um, but nice. No, it's, it's good to have the it's good to have the bike. Good way of keeping fit. Low impact. Oh, listen to you. Low impact. Woohoo! Yeah, it's all good. No, yes. Um, anyway, you two, we, we've, we've seen you eat your lunch, Bez, and uh, we've had a laugh with you. So you can go now if you want, and so si I can get on with talking about uh, some of the more interesting players, eh, Sai? 
Hey, the, always in my heart, these two. Always in right, my heart. Right, I'm going to leave you then. I'll let, I'll let Bez bore you to death. If you want me to join <laughs> back in to save the convo, then just have me back me to in. Say. Right. He, he can go as well. Hey, right. Boys, cheers for joining us. Thanks for coming to the party late, Bez, and get rid of that tash. I've got rid of the tash. Yeah, it's not as bad as it was either. You didn't send me that video, though, did you, for the guy's birthday? Oh, I was busy. It was busy. Cheers, <laughs> <Hey>, boys. <laughs> See you later, See you later. Guys. See you later, boys. Look after yourselves. Bye, 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 bye. Anyway, Si, back to, uh, back to some sensibilities. And uh, yeah. I did invite them to, because I thought you'd have got on to their, their stories by that point. But... That just emphasises, doesn't it, what the boys do think of you. You know, I messaged them both late last night and said, fancy jumping on a Zoom uh, with Si. And straight away, I think it was about half 11, they were replying saying, yeah, definitely. We'll have a, have a laugh with Si. So. But, you know, when, when you've worked with them for so long like that and you've seen them back onto the pitch and, you know, I see it down the training ground, the boys do think a lot of you. It, you, you can't help it, it's uh, I think the the thing for me is is that uh, being being older um, you've kind of almost got the uh, the father son relationship with some of them so you know you you go through things um, you know Hilch was having some building work done in his house and so he's asking you questions about how you do this or how you do that and Glenn Ray's uh, wanting to lease a car and you're helping him out with his lease forms um, and you kind of build that relationship with them that, that is not only kind of the medical side of it, but it's also a bit of a, a, bit of a fatherly figure um, with stuff as well. So it, it, you do build those bonds um, with the lads. And, and I think the important thing is, is, is as Hilt said, it's the, it's the honesty. Um, you know, when they're, when they're injured, it, it's, it's not trying to mask anything. It's telling them as it is, because that's what they want to know. And then you're on that you're on that playing field of then you can do something about it. And and I think as a medical department and with the lads I've got in there, I, I always want them to to look at it and go on reflection every day. You know, can can I be more in it, uh, innovative? Can I can I think of something different? Got to be honest. You know, I've got to I've got to sort of make sure I'm up to date with everything. It's important that you're up to date with all these techniques and. But, you know, be proactive. But that honesty is the big is the big key. And I think if you are with them, the lads, um, and, you know, I always say to them, you know, I'm not involved in the politics of the football club. So it's no good talking to me about managers and it's no good talking to me about uh, other things. You know, this is what we're here for. I think you build that relationship and you get the respect. Yeah, definitely. Well, I think you've certainly got that from those boys. And, uh, I mean, who... Just going back to the, the list of 185, oh. um, there's got to have been some funny, funny boys in there that, you know, have made you smile. We've had two of them there, but what, what are the funniest moments that stick out for you? Um, I mean, one of, one of the funny lads is always, was always Paul Benson, uh, the giraffe, you know, um, and uh, of course he did have neck issues and, and, and what have you. And, that, that nearly at one stage, you know, could have cost him a retirement uh, and we managed to get through that and, and keep him playing. But we used to have a, a, a thing with uh, Benno where it was a joke a day and, and, and Benno was a real lively kind of character. But it's just a silly thing. It's, uh, I remember going with uh, Martin Craney. When Martin Craney injured his, uh, injured his knee, we, uh, we had to go and get a, an ultrasound scan done on it and a, and a possible injection. Uh, and we went into the, uh, into the, the clinic uh, and the the nurse asks Martin to to uh, to go through, and most of the times you're there to chaperone as well, make sure things run smoothly. But I said to Martin, "Oh, you know, the consultant's not here yet, so you just go through." So of course um, he goes through into this uh, into this room, and then he comes out, and the nurse is absolutely laughing, and he's got a little bit of a strange look on his face. So he sits down, and I said. Um, said what's happened there then Martin and uh, he said you're never going to believe it he said I've gone in there I think I'm having the injection so he said I've took my trousers off I'm sat there with no trousers on and the nurse has come in and said oh blimey Mr Craney I'm only doing a blood test <laughs> and it's just silly it's just some, some of the you know the the, the silly things um, like like that but you know they're all in their in their own uh, in their own ways 
you know, they, they, they have their little quirks and they have their little ways of dealing with things that, that um, yeah, strange creatures. Definitely. Well, I, I know you'll be, uh, you'll be missing them all, mate, and desperate to get back to them and get back to some kind of, uh, I keep hearing the phrase, new normal, but normality. Um, but as we said earlier, only when the, when the time is right. But, um, you know, we perhaps are moving towards that now. Um, I think we've uh, I've taken up plenty of your time and uh, we should look to draw it to a close, mate. But um, it's fair to say that coming up to, well, what do we say, 11 years now? You've yep. not County game we're talking about with Hilts was your, your 500th game in the dugout for, for Luton. So we must be at six, well, not, we're approaching 600 now, aren't we? We must be. We must be. Uh, we must be getting close. And it's um, it, the, the thing I always say is that in my time at Luton, there's never really been uh, a, a time where something hasn't been happening. You know, whether that's been a, a final of something, whether it's been a playoffs, whether there's been a promotion push, it's been an amazing time. And uh, and God rest him. My dad's no longer no longer with us, but he uh, he was a he was a Peterborough United fan. Uh, and he said to me one day, he said, you know what? He said, you've seen more in your time at Luton than I have in 40 plus years of supporting Peterborough. And and that's what I think makes the place kind of unique is it's, it, it's always, there's always something, you know, that's, that's happening there. You know, now you've got the stadium coming and um, there's, there's, there's so many positives with it all. And, Talking, you know, about the medical side of things, um, you know, the support I get from Bobber's Travel. Every year, you know, the, the guys get in touch with me. Can we help you? Is there a piece of equipment we can buy for you? Um, and that's brilliant, you know. And, and even, you know, I've got to say of Gary on the board, they, they've always been supportive. This football club has never scrimped on its player welfare. Never once has anyone ever said to me, you know, you've got to cut a corner, you've got to do this, you know. The, the, the care of the players has always been paramount and that's brilliant to work with you know when you know you've got that support and back in Bez mentioned the Alter G you know he needed that machine the club made it happen um, and I think that's again you know a unique thing um, from the fans getting involved uh, and over the years you know they've, they've, they've spent uh, a lot of money in, in, in getting us equipment which is unbelievable. Yeah, no, quite right, and uh, they do deserve a lot of support. I, I don't know whether Bez is actually going to fit that machine in a van and uh, get it into his shed, mate. But uh, it's been he'll have, a go. he'll have a go, definitely. It's been crucial in getting him fit, and you know, every day when I come down there and you see boys working out on it, and it just gets them moving, even with the most serious of injuries, doesn't it? So yeah, fair play to uh, to Bobbers and, and Les Miller and Sue Miller, who obviously do a lot. Um, for organising that, but uh, but no, listen, great to catch up, Si. It's been uh, it's been fun. It's been good to see Hilts and Bez um, back on Zoom, and hopefully we'll see each other in person uh, very soon, mate. But look after yourself for now, and uh, see you shortly. Yeah, thanks, Stu, and just uh, just to everybody, hey, stay safe and make sure you're doing all the right things. <laughs>